right let me do a quick sound check it's always funny i'm i'm counting down i'm I, like during the last 2 minutes i have nothing to do i'm just looking at the countdown <laughs> i can hear myself perfect that's why i blanked out uh i'm just doing a sound check i'm just looking at the time and like the last 2 minutes i'm just bored now i'm not because i'm excited to be uh doing more top solutions understanding more top solutions it's kind of funny uh the first ever i think live stream i did on the channel and also the first ever top solution that it was the other nfl competition let's see what it's called i, I i'm even blanking out on that let me quickly find the tab that i just opened i never have enough tabs open right <laughs> so uh, this is the reason i'm doing this it's because uh, the first and future player contact detection competition is somewhat related to this and hopefully if if you're participating in that this might be helpful to you the first ever live stream i did on this channel and of kaggle solutions was on nfl first and future impact detection competition the one that happened 2 years ago so it's it's exciting to just uh, do one more on nfl although i know nothing about the sport but as i understand this competition is pretty cool in the sense that you get to learn about object detection learn about ocr and you also get to some you don't get to some teams did some teams did uh, perspective transforms so uh, let's start by looking at the what the competition is and as you can see in the subtitle let me minimize this zoom in a bit it's called segment and label helmets and video footage so that's what you're doing essentially and uh, it looks like NFL uh, play videos have been shared from different perspectives. Once you look into the data, you'll see that it's from different perspectives, different angles. And what you're doing here is, if you just look at this GIF that's playing here, is it GIF? Is it GIF? I don't know what it's called, but I call it GIF. So uh, you have different players with their jersey numbers. right and uh, i don't understand nfl much but i understand once someone has the ball they have to run across to the field and that's when they score a touchdown so if they reach to the end of the field it's a touchdown but uh, while they're doing this they have this wall of other players to run through and as you can see it's, it's uh, if you've seen a play it's it's quite challenging to do that so it's even more so tough to figure out where their helmets are right just looking at this video you can see that some of them are occluded some of the angles aren't right and i can't know for example what this player's jersey number is this person in red right so you have some clues like i can tell this is 55 so let's say uh, you could possibly tell that this helmet would be to the person in jersey number 55 and you're tasked to detecting all of these helmets and segmenting them so in that sense while you're creating this bounding box it's an object detection problem and some top teams ended up using ocr methods as well uh, there were many baselines many different uh, packages shared for that as well so what people were doing were they were reading the jersey numbers and using ocr on top of that and after that there were different perspectives from where these videos were shared so i know i've i've just been looking at the same gif but uh, we'll we'll get to the kernels and stuff in just a second so uh, one thing i learned there are two teams and these videos are recorded from different perspectives so one is the home team the other one is called the visiting te- visiting team uh, so from what i know the team where uh the the city where the comp- the competition not the competition the match is happening that's the home ground and if the team from there is playing that's the home team and if the other team is playing against them then they become the visiting team so you have these two teams and you have different perspectives uh by perspectives i mean you get this overview camera right and it's pretty zoomed out when you're watching this on video i did end up watching some of the videos none of them made any sense and uh, I don't know who watches the sports. I I couldn't understand it. If you could uh, explain it to me, that'll be great. But uh, in that, you have this perfect perfect video that's of course meant for entertainment. So it's zoomed in, it's panning in the sense the the camera is moving. You can make sense of what's going on. Here, it's more challenging. The uh, the host did say that it's part of the challenge to make sure that you can work with such uh, constant angles of the video. So to summarize the problem. videos of these playbacks in the form of images have been shared they have been sampled like the video has been sampled from in different images so random frames have been sampled 
along with that you also have some tracking data of uh, these folks so these players that is also provided to you so let's head over to the data tab now so you have the player tracking also provided to you and you have different columns telling you what's going on so let's see here you have the frames you have the labels being provided to you you're also given the bounding box of course and then you're given the impact type so uh, the impact could be if the helmets of the players are colliding they basically in this sport players tackle into each other ayush is saying he'll explain this competition to me next week okay thanks thanks ayush ayush just plays uh, valorant all the time so i don't know if he'll if you can do that in one week let's see uh the impact type is when the players are tackling each other trying to slow down the other player from scoring a touchdown uh they could either have a helmet impact where their helmets collide shoulder body or ground impact and is definitive impact tells you if it's a true or false uh indicator of definite impacts these are given more weights you're also given is a sideline player so as i understood there are about 22 players on the field all the time and some are just sitting outside the field so you might also see them in the video you don't have to segment those or you don't have to detect those so um you're also given the uh, the time stamps position along the field the speed and acceleration of the players as they're running around their orientation and their angle of uh, motion so you literally can tell for every single player how they're moving along and in which direction are they moving now this is cool in the sense that you get all this data but it's also challenging that how do you end up feeding this to the right model so you can see it's it's quite a complex problem in that sense so to start us off what i'd like to do is and just to reestablish this is quite impactful in the real world in the sense that uh, these are real humans who are playing the sport and you don't of course care about their safety and you would also like to uh make the sport interesting so just by segmenting this you can also help uh, the host uh, the sport in different ways as you might imagine uh what i'll do to start us off is i'll uh, share my screen to h2o's hydrogen torch which has been built by many legendary kaggle grandmasters and i'll explain or refresh the ground basics of uh, segmentation and object detection because we'll see a few of those being repeated mang says hello to me hello mang mang has become a regular to the live stream it's it's great to see him back um so what i've done here is i've loaded up an object detection dataset we're supposed to detect weeds and what i've done is i've loaded up um let's say you you could have different model types you could have efficient debt or let's let's do faster rcnn uh, and what you need to provide inside hydrogen torch as you can see it's just like a very simple uh ui it's a no code ui based uh application you can create where you can trade like not trade train where you can train your models incredibly fast so i'm i'm just establishing the ground basics to train this model i'm also supposed to provide the bounding boxes and point out the columns that hey here's where the x minimum y minimum x max and y max column go you're supposed to uh, supply those to the model while you're training these and i'll say i want to sample the entire data set you could simply slide and select the image width and then you can select different image channels so number of image channels usually it's three because it's rgb uh the top team the person who finished number 1 actually had four channels and if i wanted to do that here i can just like move this number up but the top team actually supplied the player uh, tracking info as well to the cnn model directly which is pretty cool to see i can set my augmentation strategy here so i'll say uh, i want hard augmentations and i want cut mix please and from here i can also decide on the concentration or probability of these augmentation as they happen i am just pointing these things out because again these are all hyper parameters that you probably care about and let's say um i don't know let's let's do this with the se res next although a lot of the top teams trained um i would imagine efficient at backbone so that would be 
efficient debt as the model along with efficient net backbones and i can also select uh, different optimizers learning rates and all the fine things all of these are fine details while training these models one more thing i'll point out you can also set the nms threshold so nms stands for non uh, is the full form given here no it's not non maximus suppression i'm non max i'm i'm blanking out on the full form and i'll just come back to that but uh, basically when you're working with a lot of bounding boxes you can filter out the ones with lower confidence so that's what these sliders allow you to do and that again becomes a important hyperparameter all i need to do now is i can just run this experiment and this will train the model for me but just to reiterate when you train training an object detection or segmentation model uh, you're supposed to provide the masks or the bounding box info and then you can decide the backbone you can provide all of these info uh, it's fairly easy to train this model here so that's why i thought i'll just showcase this and once it starts training i can um point out how cut mix works or if this takes a while i can just move on started training so i can move on here i can also monitor the learning rate here uh, but what i wanted to show was you can see this is what cut mix look like looks like so as you can see it's still object detection but the augmentation is different images are being cut and mixed together so i can monitor all of that here as well but these are the basics of training an object de detection model and this was the first part of the pipeline for many of the top teams so they had to detect the helmets in the first place right and then they had to figure out whose helmet it was that's how this competition is structured so that was a quick refresher on how object detection is done and the most common backbones or models being used there let's take a look at the getting started guide rob had uh, hosted this competition and he was like incredibly active throughout the competition if uh, you're not familiar he's also been creating absolutely high quality videos on youtube so let me let me plug his channel i would highly encourage you all to check out his channel he creates absolutely awesome stuff on all things machine learning uh, definitely watch his videos they are absolutely awesome i have watched all of them as you can see you can see you can see the progress for almost all of these let me drop the link to that um but you should you should watch his channel the link to that awesome um so here's the explainer in a little bit more depth the goal of the competition simply put we are trying to assign the correct player label on helmets labels consist of value h for home team and v for visiting team followed by the jersey number player labels are provided within the tracking data for each player a perfect submission would correctly identify the helmet in every frame of the video and assign that helmet the correct player label how does scoring work the scoring is weighted accuracy where detected helmets in an impact are weighted 1000 times more than non impact helmets uh, and that's because nfl will use these algorithm in helmet impacts to players there are some uh, limitations as well the submissions must have uh, at least 0.35 iou when i was training the model in hydrogen torch you could see that the default uh, was already set to iou and that's the usual case when you're trying to find uh, bounding boxes and that's that for intersection over union but that just tells you how much the ground truth of the box overlaps with the predicted one so you are taking like the area between two boxes and trying to figure out if it's like the score is 1 that means that there is a 100% overlap and you need at least a 0.35 overlap here each ground truth will be only paired with one helmet per box per frame no more than 22 helmets per video because that's the maximum number of players and a player's helmet must be predicted once per frame no duplicates so there were quite some constraints and as, as you can see this problem is getting like uh, harder every second as it go into more depth i have already explained what data is provided so i'll keep scrolling and then you are also provided with uh, baselines so i said there are different perspectives you get for the videos uh, rob has created this 
video for you so you can see it's a you can see all these bounding boxes really perfectly and the player was tackled here so inside the data you had you'd have been told that hey there's an impact and this would probably be a shoulder impact because uh there was a shoulder tackle i think i don't know i'm not an expert on this topic <laughs> and as you can see in just that one frame there was a false positive as well on the outside but what you care about is this is false positive on the camera man but what you really care about is predicting all of these bounding boxes for all these players so if i just zoom in a bit more this is the visiting team and his jersey number is 55 so this is somewhat correctly predicted as v55 and then this is h70 so that's the home team member it also given the entire ngs tracking data uh, where your data is sampled at 10 hertz and you could also use this to your advantage so this is another angle as i was pointing out uh, this is the end zone and i think um, this is the sideline view so you're on the side of the lines and if you're from looking from the end it's the end zone view that adds to the challenge in the sense that you just have these two perspectives for this problem and then here's an animation of the ngs data as well this is literally going by the time stamp so i'll scroll past it but i'll call this more civilized in the sense that if you plot this and this uh, is plotly it's more civilized and we did see these two players go out of uh, the frame but here you can get like a very proper overview of the field because it's just data points being provided to you so this might make your job easier and you could you need to figure out how to use this alongside uh, your data or the video data the first position uh, person it was a solo goal k mart actually supplied this info as a fourth channel so they had a four step pipeline but they what what they ended up doing was usually you supply three channels rgp to a model this fourth channel of the tracking info was also supplied to the uh, object detection models for the case so this was the baseline that had been shared now a lot more things had been shared throughout uh, the competition so i'll quickly glance over those because these really determined where different ideas were coming from um i don't think i want to mention anything from here the first thing that started was deep sort and people had tuned this algorithm uh, it basically creates this approach you step through each frame in a video and apply the deep sort algorithm if you go through the algorithm uh, it's it's quite dense essentially you're just grouping clusters predicted by this deep learning based algorithm and then you're picking the most common label for that cluster why is this useful uh, if you look at the video very closely the players are pretty close together right so it, it it's like quite challenging for the object detection algorithm just by themselves to be able to figure out which is uh, the best example in that case so i assume that's why this was important and this was shared pretty early in the competition by the host himself so this also set the direction where the ideas would eventually go many people ended up using this algorithm called deep sort you can read through the archive paper it's basically helpful in just figuring out uh, or creating this cluster and figuring out which is the like most prominent um helmet in that frame and you can see how it works in this uh, video playback see those highlights that were done if i just go back the red highlight and then you see this yellow red so yellow is telling you that hey there was an impact here between the helmets so you can see the baseline is improving and now you're getting along uh, you're you're getting more and more info and you're able to predict more stuff many people as you can see had shared how to tune this and then uh, it's it always happens someone shares the baseline and people always tune it to the most optimum then uh, there was this additional info on the jerseys right you could see the numbers very clearly you can see this is number 18 and it's number 18 in every possible orientation so you could train uh, different models let's see what uh, they've done here where do they import this stuff hmm 
I'm trying to figure out what are they doing here. So they've trained an efficient net B0 for Keras. Other people had shared a model called Easy OCR as well to do this stuff. But you could also, of course, use this info to your advantage, right? Because it's it's quite, quite visible in every frame. This was another possible baseline. Someone had shared a mask RCNN without downsampling. And I did show the baseline in Hydrogen Torch to also be a faster RCNN. I don't think any top team ended up with the RCNN. I might be wrong about this. Uh, but this was also a valid baseline in that case. And people were working with 512 by 512 pixels. That was the size of the data set. Um, KMAT finished first. And I'll also point out the school uh, tips that they had shared. So in inference-only competition or competition with limits, you are supposed to train your model offline, upload it to Kaggle and run the inference there. You always have to face a lot of bugs there. And what ends up happening is you get quite frustrated and you always find one such thread. So uh, KMAT pointed out that how can you debug these? There are some ways because, you know, the errors here are always very cryptic. So they've suggested that for his case, he was, I think, trying to work with four different models. And you're going to try except for all of these. And for every individual one, you give one specific error. So you can know where the bug is lying or in which model the bug happens. So let's say in the third prediction, you return no CSV. And if you see CSV not found error, the bug is in module three. So let's say you have multiple modules working together. You can use this trick to debug uh, your inference pipeline. Charlie had shared this um, guide and I'm sorry to all the authors, I forgot to upload their work. So I'll go back and upload at least the last three ones. As a reminder to anyone, if you later go ahead and read all of this, please, please support the work of all of these people by uploading it. After this live stream, I'll actually go back and upload every single one of them, but I don't want to waste your time. I, I really want to emphasize on that, but... Uh, if you read kernels or discussions that are helpful, you should always upload uh, other people's stuff. This was a very nice guide to NFL football. I read through it. If you want, you can read through it. It's straightforward. But uh, this should give you some sense of what the sport is about. As I said, each team has about 11 players. You have an offense and a defense. Straightforward offense carries the ball through. Uh, a touchdown happens when the ball literally reaches the end of the field. You have kickoff where the uh, ball is kicked off. You also have something known as a field goal, which happens if the offense cannot score a touchdown. They may kick uh, a field goal through the goal post. So you have these insanely large goal posts. I don't know if you've seen the videos. And if the ball actually goes through them, uh, then that becomes a field goal. And if the defense manages to stop them, they get two points. So there's also uh, a safety goal. You can read through this. That's all that's worth highlighting here. Let's support this and move on. People had also shared how to use MM detection and uh, Detectron 2. And these are really straightforward. So Camaro had shared two notebooks to work with these. And if you just use the CLI, of both these modules, you could have gotten started. So a lot of these modern modules, if I may, really work well with the data because it's processed so nicely. And then the problem becomes how, since it's so easy for everyone, right? Like how do how do people build on top of that? Casual competitions are always insanely competitive. Uh, so let's move on to the top solution. Before that, I have one trick to explain. So that is weighted box fusion. And I remember Chris's solution from this competition explained it. So I'll just use that uh, and thank Chris for doing that. I've already uploaded it, as you can see. So let's say if you have 10 fold models and each model is inferred with a confidence 10%. After we apply WBF, it is possible that three models find a confidence like so. So you have three models with different confidence. And the other seven models do not find a box. So then the average confidence is 0 0.06, about 6% since the other models aren't contributing. So we need to remove this box 
if you don't wish to have boxes under 10%, right? So this 6% is less than 10%. So this is what weighted box fusion does. You just filter them out like so. You iterate through them, you look at the scores and you just remove them. This is helpful uh, if you are training multiple models and you're being given multiple of those bounding boxes. That is how you combine them. And that is how you discard them. If you discard all of them, you'll have possibly a boost in your accuracy. Okay. I just wanted to highlight that for now. And this is also a pretty cool blog post, although you really don't need to read through this if you want. Uh, it's on analytics with you. You're welcome to read it if you like. I'm scrolling through to remind myself if I can see the full form of NFA, NMS here, but it doesn't seem like it's mentioned. All right, I, I'll have to look it up afterwards. What an embarrassing way. <laughs> um, cool. Let's start going through the top solutions. Let's look at the leaderboard real quick. So uh, the gold extends up to 11th position. Higher is better for this metric. You can say uh, KMAT had an insane amount of difference. And if you know him or this person, he always has like insane, insane level of uh, solutions, very beautiful solutions, very uh, interesting to read. The other DFL competition that had ended recently, this is something else, but this competition ended recently. I just wanted to show that the level of depth his solutions have. So you, you can read through this I live stream in a bit in like a, a week or two. His solutions are always insanely uh, incredible to read and like they're, they're very mind opening if you end up going through them. So he finished first, as you might expect. <laughs> um, let's see. The other teams are pretty close to each other. Team Hydrogen or Team Water Cooled was eighth here. So Philip and Pascal finished eighth. I think Nanashi was in this competition as well. Nanashi is also a part of the H2A team. Yes, I see him. Oh no, they, they shook down by five positions. That's that's not the best outcome. Okay, so the goal was about in 0.85 region or so, and the top score possible was 9-4. I just wanted to point out the scores to understand these solutions better. Let me again minimize this and zoom in a bit more. So KMAT says, let's support his solution. This required various skills of detection, registration, optimization and tracking and debugging of course. His pipeline consisted of detector to find the helmets. Then you convert to project movies, images, uh, the videos to a 2D map. So you have all of these videos. You would want them to be a 2D map to be able to work with the data efficiently. That's what he's suggesting here. So he used an approach to basically convert these videos into this. He's calling it image to map. And then you have a classifier to classify players into home or visiting team. Then you register detected players onto a 2D map and track detected bounding boxes and reassign the players. So again, just to reiterate, you detect the helmets, you convert it into a 2D map, you figure out which team is which. Then you use the tracking data to, uh, you superimpose the tracking data on top of it. And then finally you get your outputs after tracking the boxes. His key solution, he says, was uh, mapping and registration modules, which gave him a 0.8 score. Let's look at each in, uh, individual part of his pipeline. This is the complete overview. So you get in the RGB image and you have the tracking data. You are detecting uh, the boxes here and that gives you the bounding box data. You're also converting this into a 2D map. And from there you get the residual player features. You're also feeding this data into the tracking data uh, to get this info where you can convert the teams into home or visiting. 
after that you have a tracker module which takes all of this history and reassigns player by using multi frame and multi modeler predictions and he's ensembling them by a wbf like method so he uses or he combines all of this it's like a two level stack if i may uh, the the first stage of this uh, ensemble contains detector the mapping and point to point registration all of that info goes into the tracker and that combines all of the different frames information these are videos so you have different frames as images provided with the time stamp you combine all of that and then you get the final uh, player labels so the helmet detector in itself is also two stage detector the first detector predicts average helmet sizes and resizes input images you can see the resize being done here the second detector detects helmets in high resolution he thought fixing a uh, fixed size objects is easier than detecting objects of various sizes the second module is image to map so you need to map these uh, to the 2d data or uh, 2d map he has a cnn with a unit base to convert bounding boxes to a 2d map it predicts the 2d location looking for camera so he uses the camera and does some per perspective transform as i understand to get this 2d mapping it outputs the global location from the bottleneck and small residuals in the decoder so inside the unit uh, architecture you have the bottleneck and residuals from those parts of the architecture he is getting the global location and then you apply attention to the helmets and then get bounding boxes which he says or claims improves the accuracy he is an overview of this the simplified version of it is he's using cnns to convert uh, this 2d uh, this uh, helmets into a 2d map and then he's also applying attention on it to get slight amount of boost from there there is some point to point registration being done he says this is matching predicted players onto a 2d map he's using something known as a iterative closest points based algorithm which iteratively solves the nearest search and normal equation to get four unknown parameters which are the following you can read through it uh, but basically it gives you four parameters related to it then some pre or post processing is applied to remove inappropriate predictions which are the following if it's written in the image so i'm just zooming it if the error is very large the algorithm is run again some points can be neglected if they deteriorate fitting accuracy the points are neglected and he says this will improve the registration accuracy for pre processing following ideas are used before applying the icp fitting fix the side of the camera fix the team features so you need to figure out if it's a home or away team and set the initial location x and y and rotation algorithms how is he doing that the ngs tracking data is provided again for this competition then some of these are neglected uh, which are far from players in the tracking data how does he figure that out remember he had created this 2d map so if the players are away from the impact you can ignore them then the team classifier module comes into the picture team information is also important to improve the registration accuracy cnn classifier predicts the similarity matrix to show pair of players belonging to the same team or not he uses arc face and pseudo labeling to improve the accuracy so you can see here the rgb image and the bounding boxes become four channels being inputted to a efficient v2s v2 small and from there you get this output matrix on which you have an arc face margin being added basically he's doing matrix learning if uh, i simplify it a bit he's applying matrix learning on top of this finally you have the tracker which accumulates the results of player assignment and then reassigns players to the bounding boxes 
and then finally he ensembles all of this it's i did warn you all it's it's quite it's quite a, a dense solution as you can see all of these steps uh, are really hard by themselves just to tune i'm sure it took a lot of time and as you can see uh, just one thing worth pointing out a lot of the details are missing how did he feed this data through how did he make all of that work uh, that is not shared and I, i'm sure for good reason because he wants to keep this for himself so finally you ensemble this by using something like a wbf which i just explained and then you take the weighted average of player assignment matrix finally four detectors ensemble is used for the submission and then he shares the scores and how they are being used here and one thing worth pointing out he said he started learning and machine started programming and machine learning 3 years ago and his knowledge does come from kagil so uh, you can check out his inference code but that's all i wanted to highlight just to quickly summarize while i stop zooming out of this let's look at the overview one more time one last time you have provided the rgb image and the tracking data you have not you came at hard a two stage model of sorts where he had a detector for the bounding boxes a mapping algorithm for creating a 2d map a point to point registration to figure out home and away teams which was finally fed to a tracker and you had different models being applied at every stage you were using the unit data along with attention to figure out the helmets you were registering this onto a 2d map and very cool pre processing and post processing techniques were applied some of these make a lot of sense right if you are trying to look for an impact it will only happen in a like certain region where the helmets are like let's say uh, i am tracking a monitor i would only care about this area or this area right beyond that it doesn't make sense to track the monitors so you would have false positives just by nature of how these work but if i'm if i'm uh, considering tracking these two monitors i only care about that region and anything outside let's say plus minus i don't know 50 pixels around that area i don't care about i can discard those so that's a really cool pre processing technique in my opinion and then you classify the team add the tracking info and finally ensemble very as i pointed out very beautiful solution and insanely uh, fun to read the host himself rob said he only had time to read this once and it's an absolute masterpiece i completely agree with him so let's move on to the second place solution not the 22nd place there was a lot of discussion here and people had elaborated a lot on this i don't find anything worth highlighting uh, if this is a bit convoluted to you which i'm sure it is just read through the comments here if you'd like they're worth reading let's go through the second place solution he also congratulates came at uh, i'm sure he must have enjoyed his solution the brief summary of his solution is he had used a yolo v5 with supplemental photos for detection the prediction accuracy was not good so he up sampled from 1280 to 1664 image size helmet clustering was done to do team classification two stage k means clustering using the helmet images the first k means clustering extracts 20 colors from the set of pixels of all helmets in the second k means helmets are clustered using feature vectors this boosts his accuracy slightly finally feature ext extraction for distance matching you have the 2d information uh, in the tracking data right so using that he calculates the player orientation he created a model that predicts orientation in the tracking data and used it to penalize if the angle is too far off and then an apparent gap between the helmet and sensor position the apparent helmet changes depending on whether the user is standing or squatting he created a model to predict the shift finally he did a coordinate transform 
he used lines on the ground to align the coordinates of the video and did a transformation i assume to do a 2p 2d mapping finally player assignment was done sometimes there were less than 22 players in the video and he adjusted the number of players by removing players on top bottom left and right of the tracking information basically he again zoomed into only the area that's uh of importance inside the frame as i said if you care about two monitors you should just be looking at that area for tracking he said the object tracking models use the closeness of image features as a metric however he thought this approach might not be appropriate so he used a sort algorithm to quickly summarize while i stop zooming out and do this <laughs> i should be i wanted to uh, shift minus and not pinch zoom sorry about that so you detect not you tito detected the helmets clustered them for classifying the teams extracted the features used the player orientation information the gap uh, visually and between the sensor applied transformation based on the lines in the images as as a visual transformation assigned the players zoomed into a area of interest in the video and tracked the players with the sort algorithm instead of the default ones so this was the second place solution i don't think there's anything else highlight worth highlighting so i'll move on to the third now for the third place this team had used you can see from the title yolo v5 deep sort icp and hungarian algorithm we had already looked at what icp and deep sort is let's see how their pipeline comes together the summary is you use yolo v5 to detect helmets deep sort to track the helmets iterative closest point and hungarian algorithm to assign helmet boxes to the tracking data you divide helmets into two clusters using k means and color of the helmet so for uh, the we we saw in some videos but the home team has red jerseys i think and the visiting team has white i think so you can use that information right and what they're just doing here is they're using that pixel information to create two clusters you use icp and hungarian algorithm again to assign helmet boxes to the tracking data taking into account results of deep sort and color information finally use hungarian algorithm to determine the final label so it looks like their key difference so far is to use the hungarian algorithm in this pipeline you can see that all of these solutions are like multi stage or multi step i think it should be multi stage right multi step multi stage i think both refer to the same stage yeah we can call it multi stage right because like the info from one model is being forwarded into the next part of the pipeline i mean like i wouldn't call k means a model <laughs> i would i would say this is a multi stage approach for sure um so you can see in all solutions multi stage algorithms have been created where the like info is being passed through all of these models into each other for the third place the key difference looks like was hungarian algorithm so far so once again let's see what they are done they also used yolo v5 to detect helmets on image size that was slightly smaller during inference yolo 5 and 6 were used and only horizontal flip was used as an augmentation since the helmets are somewhat included lower thresholds for confidence and iu you were set deep sort was used to track the uh, the helmet and these features are also used in stage 4 and the confidence is used in stage 3 and stage 5 this step is quite dense as you can see the icp data and hungarian algorithm was used to assign the boxes 
to tracking data for each frame. And then some details of how the false positives and the tracking data was filtered, some pre-processing and post-processing techniques are applied here to make this more polished. I'm just skipping past that. You can divide the helmets into two clusters. So I was wrong, the helmets are either black or white or maybe blue, I think. But this info was used using K-means. And finally, the ICB and Hungarian algorithm were again used to assign helmet boxes to the tracking data, taking into account the results of deep sort. And finally, the Hungarian algorithm was used to determine the label. These scores are shared like so. And uh, this was the third place solution. So to summarize again, let's just look at this step. YOLO V5 to detect helmets, deep sort to tag the helmet, which was later fed into the fifth stage again. So you go from stage two to stage five. You use some algorithms, I'm simplifying it, to assign tracking data to the helmet boxes, clusters to assign the team home or visits. Then you used all of this info, taking into account uh, this info to assign boxes to the tracking data and finally the label was predicted. So again, this, this now becomes a six stage pipeline, if you will. Let's take a look at the next solution after this. You can see that there are some more details, but just scrolling through this also looks somewhat similar right helmets are being detected deep sort is being applied or uh, 2d mapping is being done one thing that slightly stand stands out is cluster on sumling and linear regression finally on top of this so it looks like cluster on sumling was slightly different but we can see the top teams are somewhat converging on like a similar pipeline right so uh, they're transparent that they did start out with this notebook, which was the notebook shared by the host himself and kept iterating on it until they got to the fourth place. So this is proof that looking at uh, public notebooks is also helpful. The baseline was replaced with a trained YOLO v5, 15 epochs with default parameters and five epochs on every third frame, excluding these boxes. What are these boxes? I pointed out earlier that some uh, players usually sit on the side while these games are being played. Those boxes are excluded for training because you really don't care about those. And then detection is done on 1 to 8 zero size. Deep sorts parameters were tuned and the code was slightly changed to return unconfirmed boxes as well. Though, as you can see, he went, did the team did go ahead and tweak the algorithm quite a bit. And I assume it was just from the baseline, but they did fine tune it quite a bit. In the last days, the deep sort was replaced with a custom tracking algorithm. It scored significantly worse on public LB. Therefore, it was ignored. Two D mapping was done like so. So the jersey number was predicted by just using the image data and cropping around that. They utilize when the jersey numbers are clearly visible. Crop into the area. A two head model was trained. One that predicts the digit, and the other one being uh, one for each digit. All right, that makes sense. So you were using two heads for, let's say, number one and five. And ResNet 34 was the backbone here. They'd use cut mix, which I just showcased a few minutes ago. Put random two digits with time font on center of the image and converted black converted to black and white with 50% probability. So you can see the predictions here for these models, but basically what they would have done is crop into this 
and uh, using a ResNet 34 backbone, they would predict two and zero through the two heads. Finally, cluster ensembling was done. So for each helmet, score for each label was calculated within the cluster. All helmet label possible matches. So helmet and the label matches within a frame is sorted according to the score. And then they are sorted in the descending order. After doing this, you can imagine that some false positives or some unassigned ones might remain. So a linear regression model was fitted within each frame to the tracking data. After doing all of this, the greedy minimum distance assignment is done and all helmets get a label. So to summarize, I didn't want to zoom out like that. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, They had detect the, detected the helmets using a YOLO V5 model. After that, they had tuned deep sort, applied it along with the custom tracking info. But uh, after switching out to an arc phase based extractor, they stuck to deep sort. From there, they cropped into the images, figured out the just jersey numbers. Finally, uh, all of these helmets were clustered together and the info was converted into a prediction file using greedy minimum distance assignment. And all helmets were provided a label. So that was the fourth place solution, I believe. Yes. All right, let me see if there's anything in the chart. I don't see anything in the chart. Cool, I'll keep going in order. I think this was the last gold solution that had been shared. No, uh, we have up until 11, so I'll try to cover all of those. Let's go to the fifth place one. He says he'll only be using verbal and graphically lacking explanation since he's exhausted. Uh, but to summarize, a detector was used, of course, which is YOLO V5 here. Label assignment was done, and this was done using Euclidean distance minimization by Hungarian assignment. So you can see that uh, the fifth team also ended up on Hungarian algorithm. For tracking, they had also used deep sort and they ended up implementing his own dynamic programming algorithm with bit mask function. So I'm not even going to try and understand what this is because I'm absolutely terrified of dynamic programming. <laughs> if you've studied for DSA, you would be terrified of it. Um, The summary is provided here. So you have the detector, which is the most important. Hungarian assignment on Euclidean distance is also done, which also happens to be most important. Interesting. Gravity features, he says, are moderately important. Duplicate fixing is also impactful. And dynamic programming with bit mask, IOU tracker was also important. Finally, cluster breaking was applied in post tracking and he's not sure if this was helpful things that did not work are the following he's shared quite a bit of algorithms here that did not work i assume these are all algorithms similar to deep sort and uh, the likes so fair mot sort i don't know what this is but it looks like uh, this would be an object detection algorithm Adding homography wasn't helpful on top of Hungarian distance. Performing forward and reverse tracking in same video. Tuning the Kalman filters in deep sort so he couldn't improve or squeeze out more performance by that. And he tried training a 2.5D CNN uh, inputting the acceleration and velocity which did not help quite a bit. 
so uh, if i were to point out what's the main differentiator here you can see that he'd also used wbf he'd also done horizontal flipping the top teams always apply somewhat similar solution and then they are like these fine differences for the label assignment you can see that they had implemented themselves a few different things in here and especially the tracking bit where his own dynamic programming function had been implemented so this would be the like key differentiator in here harsh is asking can you do kaggle playground series top solution i plan to once it's over so like right now the third solution sorry the third one is happening right let's see let's quickly see competitions i can't find it why is kaggle search so broken oh uh, i had summarized all i wanted from fifth place so let me quickly quickly go to all competition i think there'll be an episode 4 after this right so once that's over i'll do that i'll i'll go through all of these that is the plan at least so now cool let me catch up on the chat a bit more Good to see you, Vadim. It's been a while. <laughs> Vadim must have been busy because I've not seen him join. Vadim used to join all the live streams. I don't know what happened. Currently, I was working on one of the Kaggle competitions. Which one are you working on? Is I assume it's the NFL one. That's a cool, <laughs> cool avatar, though. I assume it's it's from Stable Diffusion. I think maybe I don't know. Or is it a cartoon character? I don't know. Cool. Ah, uh, let's keep going in order. I think I'll wrap up somewhere around the eleventh place solution. Let's look at the ninth place solution. Zoom in a bit more. Close the side tab. The pipeline was also multi-part, as you can imagine. So one thing we've established is that YOLO V5 is pretty good. You can use YOLO V6 if you want. Tracking and bounding box homography matrix estimation was done. I have no idea what that means, but I assume it's to combine this and put together homography matrix information using shape context in frame one. Modifying homography matrix in previous frame to get that of the current frame. first helmet assignment is estimated using homography matrix and second helmet assignment is done using deep sort so it looks like the key difference here was homography matrix and calculating those i'll skip past the yellow fee five because it's straight forward all right so this looks like quite dense let's take a look here you're given the tracking data and from there cosine distance matrix was calculated using the video data and combining the tracking data together on top of that hungarian algorithm was applied finally something known as find homography was applied which gave the matrix let's read here to figure out if we can what that is to match the sensor data he had used the shape context and shape context is a histogram of relative position of points i'm just catching up on the chat and <laughs> seeing <laughs> seeing what's happening uh sumit is doing neutrino and he says it's a dota hero what he is saying he doesn't like dota i don't like dota either dota is a game where you have to like read five books do a phd uh read 50 more books read 50 research papers and then still you lose to people who have been playing for 6 months <laughs> i don't like it I just play Call of Duty. Uh, thanks for taking all of us off track. We were reading about the shape context. The histogram of relative position of points is provided, and he says, "Please Google it <laughs> if you're new to it. I will do that afterwards." Uh, you should. The procedure is the following: normalizing coordinates of bounding boxes and sensor data. 
scaling and rotating these coordinates calculating shape context for each points then calculating the cosine distance applying the hungarian algorithm and now i know where this is coming from so the homography matrix was calculated using a cv2 function and i assume this is iterated until the cost function stops improving so you're just optimizing for that i had read through this but i don't think this is worth highlighting so uh, this was transformed basically that i'm trying to recall what had happened here but the time factor of the uh, videos was used here i again got distracted with vadim's message the time factor of different frames was used so what was going on here is modify homography in a preceding frame to get that of the current frame since player positions of adjacent frames are similar the homography matrix should also be similar and using this uh the bounding boxes were assigned with a confidence threshold and he had done this in 60 preceding frames and selected one with the best cost finally using this matrix player label is assigned to each bounding box with a confidence more than 0.25 so 25% and if the number of helmets assigned is smaller than 22 all the remaining were matched using linear sum assignment after this the second helmet was assignment was done using deep sort and previously obtained transforms he shared the parameters of deep sort and things that couldn't work all of these are uh, quite specific to the competition so uh, this team could also not make fair mot work which makes me curious what this algorithm is i have never heard of these at least before this jersey number detection for this team couldn't work but we've seen earlier that a few teams had done that and camera matrix optimization to get the guess for first frame did not work so it looks like the key difference here was uh, using this homography transform and this homography matrix from cv2 for all these assignments all right let's move on to the ninth place solution vadim is saying he plays rocket league there was a competition rocket league data was this this was a featured competition i don't think so right I don't think it was on Kaggle either. Rocket League is a football game for those that don't know. But I'm a sixteen, and I'm also sixteen when it comes to game. <laughs> you can see, you can see how we're similar. Let's see to the tenth place solution without talking more games. Uh, oh, he says it was a tabular series. Guys, this is what I'm stream live streaming next week. Then uh, I'll find that competition, Vadim. Thanks. <laughs> Cool. I won't get distracted now. No more games, please. Um, NVNN is also Kaggle legend. I assume this was a solo goal, if I remember correctly. NVNN usually does solo competitions. Yeah, it was a solo goal. Uh, here's the approach. Here we use the Yolo V5 to detect the helmet. A regression network to match the helmet with tracking data. which was an efficient at b0 with a unit decoder by using yolo v5 and the regression model he got to 0.7 the output is post processed by tracking algorithm deep sort and this is the first time we seeing cm rpn which boosted the cv to 0.9 this is much simpler compared to the other top solutions right which is cool to see uh the regression network is quite similar to a normal segmentation network oh that's that's the end of it so the encoder was a b0 decoder was a unit the input image was a two channel image and the output was a two channel regression mask channel 1 predicting the x coordinate and channel 2 predicting the y coordinate 
so this was this is cool to see that this was a much simpler solution i'm sure many details are hidden about uh, how did you feed this info ex- exactly into this regression head it's cool to see that you could also train this sort of end to end approach where you're not fine tuning every single uh, part of the pipeline so that's your 10th place solution um i think this was the last gold so we'll probably wrap up after this let's go through the 11th place solution now the solution consists of five steps helmet detection tracking and bounding box interpolation team classification player mapping and post processing this is somewhat similar to what we've been reading so far and this was he says his first gold and we just thought it was a solo gold so it's really cool to see for helmet detection they had used a yolo v5l and for tracking and bounding box interpolation let's read what they did he created his own tracking algorithm which i assume got him to this incredible boost the algorithm uses the distance of two points of bounding boxes and predicts the next frames bounding box using optical flow when tracking is lost on some boxes they are left for two frames as the following figure shows so you have these frames if it disappears you would have an interpolated bounding box that would figure out this information this is cool to see that sometimes if you get false positives uh the person would then disappear right so you can just interpolate between the frames and somehow use this info as well to simplify that basically uh, uses where ever the older box was you can assume it's in a similar position for classification uh, team classification he had used a cnn of output size 2 teams to it which is a number of teams into length game keys he had cropped the helmets bounding boxes with the aim to utilize the color of the uniform crowd bounding boxes a slightly larger to bottom direction than the original size so basically uh, let's say if you wanted to analyze the jersey size the helmet in, in my case it would be a head bounding box would just be this much he cropped a bit under that so since my t-shirt is red uh, that would again come into the picture and you could use that information however you want for that he had used a mobile net with a cross entropy lost and the following augmentations these are pretty straight forward this was basically used as a feature extractor and the f- extracted features are split into two clusters by k means at this point you, he wasn't sure which one is the h or v team the team mapping is done in the next step which was based on this notebook which was one of the baselines i had opened earlier so uh, on top of this he had added the hungarian algorithm and the team mapping is used as cost of distance finally he had used some post processing the mapping accuracy of each frame are predicted by xgboost model and as an as input features of the xg model xg boost model the following were used number of detected bounding boxes players the frame number the difference between this frame and the nearest tracking frame if it's being shot from the end zone or side zone mean value of the coordinate and standard deviation of the coordinate so this was a second stage uh, xg boost model being used if i may uh basically the feature extracted features extracted from here were fed into the xgboost model if i may in the sense that uh the first thing they did was detect the helmets and from there the helmets were tracked which were later clustered and there was a feature extraction being done these extracted features were then using the hungarian algorithm and this base mapping algorithms you were given the bounding boxes which were finally fed into this uh 
exibus model so i would call this a three stage model right because this would be the first stage that then goes into the tracking information this info is extracted into the third step and then fed into the final stage so three or four stages if i may that's the end of the 11th place solution to summarize all of them um you can see that they are somewhat similar in the top teams the first step was to use yolo v5 to create a bounding box after that many teams ended up using the deep sort algorithm or the hungarian algorithm many teams used a clustering approach for the pixels to figure out if it was a home team or visiting team after that different teams used different approaches to figure out uh and provide the final labels for the helmets remember what we're trying to do here is figure out where the helmets are and you can see that this was a really sophisticated competition in that sense where many people implemented their own dynamic programming algorithm uh, some people had tweaked many different ones uh, the fourth place had used the linear regression head on top of different things so it was cool to see how all of this came together to me the most fascinating one was the first place solution and the one that was end to end deep learning by nbnn so anyways uh, i'll probably wrap up with that with one quick mention that uh, i will be starting a study group on this book the nlp with transformers that's by hugging face i am in touch with the authors and i'm trying to get them on a live stream so the first session will happen based on their availability but after that it will be on every saturday i don't know which competition i'll live stream next week so i'll probably just tweet about it and i will keep the kaggle series going on every weekend so thanks for watching we'll meet again next week i hope if you're participating in the nfl competition this was helpful to you uh it was interesting to read through this sophisticated <laughs> algorithms especially the ones uh, the deep sort ones and all of those details i read the papers i didn't understand them so i didn't try to explain them too much and i think what was helpful for most teams was just fine tuning them So I don't know if that's helpful for your current competition if it is uh, good luck to you thanks for watching we'll meet again next week